Hi, this is Sarah Hale Folger from the Sarah Hale Folger Project. Today, I had an amazing conversation with creator Philippe Lejeune. He lives in Pawtucket, Rhode Island and has been creating amazing sculptures and works of art working with wood and glass that are transformative. He's not only an artist, I don't even think he really says he's an artist ever, even though this man has done everything from illustrations and etchings to painting and sculpture. He's worked in all mediums, he's a, he's a writer, he's a producer, he's done many different things in his life, but he's one of the most humble people I have ever met, lives his life on the edge, risks it all so that the internal message that he has that brings people together. His, his whole idea is to bring humanity together through nature, through art, through conversation. And his works of art, ah, they go beyond description. You have to see for yourself. They're quite magical. Yeah, I don't even know how else to describe them. I just want you to see him. So stay tuned. We're going to go right into his studio. Okay, um, awesome. when I stopped doing printmaking, I had the idea to use cutouts that became sculpture and I had some commission for outdoor sculpture, so I did them in aluminum and I learned to cut the aluminum. Okay. This is an example here. Yeah. You can sh I can show you how I was cutting this, actually it was just a jigsaw oil, and you can cut this almost like butter. But uh, basically I was moving from images to three-dimensional work, but at the same time you can see they're still flat. Yes. Uh, they work at it from one side and the other side. But so I did this for a couple of years. But one day I'm going to show you something happened that changed totally my approach to images in sculpture. Okay. So I had a sample of aluminum that I was cutting. Okay. You can see it's thick. Okay. It's actually cold. Yes. Uh, Pretty heavy. And uh, you, like any sculptor, you struggle to transform the raw material. Here mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a manufactured material, and to polish it, the polish to polish the aluminum is very difficult. I had to use you know seven steps. Wow! But basically, you're struggling to overcome the quality of the material to make it your to your human to nature, to, so right. to conform to your own you know uh, imagination. Mm -hmm. But one day I was surprised that by luck, this piece of aluminum was positioned in the middle of these two cube. So let, let me show you what happened when I experienced this. You see, it was by luck it was positioned like that, and I don't know if the camera will sense it, but look what happened. Can you sense this a, a yeah. difference? Yeah. The aluminum becomes transparent when it is not transparent. Right. Can so you sense it? Yes, I sense it. It's so, like you're looking through a window. So I was overwhelmed. I bet. And I'm thinking, why it's so strange? You know, I'm struggling to transform this, like any sculptor. Here I did nothing, and I am transformed. Ah. And I thought this is way more interesting to be transformed instead of transforming the material. Oh, wow. I quickly realized that it doesn't work both sides because the thickness, you see, the idea is that it's a symmetry. If you position the cube in the symmetry, you bring back what is missing on the other side that you don't see. Correct. And that's what tricks the eyes and gives a sense of transparency. At the same time with the space, Yep. You see, we are looking at right here, but it feels like we're looking at the other side. So, right. because it's not symmetrical on the other side, I decided to use only a thin reflecting surface like mirror. And I'm going to show you this one that works like that, you know. So, all the work I do now, I never transform the material that I use, the reflecting you know, surface. You never, you, you never transform it? I stage it because you this work is a stage. With it, I work with it to stage it, okay. so to create a theater around the mirror to confuse our senses. Confu I love that. Keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? And it's a total different adventure because now I have to change all my notion of what is an image, because it's still an image. And in French, the word for image, the same letters are used yeah, in the word. Yeah, it's interesting that the word magic, the letter magic. magic and images are exactly the same letter in different order. I love I'm that. sorry it doesn't work in English. Oh, that's okay. Well, now you have another piece over here that we can actually play with. Exactly. If you okay. want to expand it. Yes. So I'm playing with this notion and to decide what can I do with this. Okay. So for example here, if we sit down, okay. so here we have a two-way mirror. And a two-way mirror work with the light. So if you put a strong light on one side, it acts like a mirror, you don't see the other side. Sure. But if you create a symmetrical light, 
you, your image is projected on the other side in the symmetry okay. of the mirror. So if we have two objects, the same way the two cubes were in the symmetry, now it's our body in the symmetry. And look ah. what happened. Ah. We are mixing. Wait, do I have to be a certain distance from you? No, no. Okay. You, it, if we l lose the asymmetry, it creates an effect. Everything becomes an effect, but we are re-engaged physically. Okay. Remember, an image, we always, you're always a viewer right. and a mind, but not a body anymore. Your body do nothing when you look at images. Right. Here, I'm reversing the game. <sighs> images always, never in the time. Right. They're outside of time. Okay. Yes. Because they were done in the past and they think about your imagination of the future. Here, I bring you in the moment. In the present moment. In the total present moment and you need to I see you play again. with oh, it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> you see it? <laughs> wait, 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 see. I have glasses and a beard. Oh. Yeah. Hey, my name is Philippe. So oh you gosh. see, we naturally focus on the face, but everything works. Okay. The, 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 bring your hand, your hand here. You can see we can play like that. So we, ah. are we are becoming expression, we are becoming playful, we lose our sense of time, yes. our intellect, we become child again, you know, playing, and being emotionally involved with what we see here. <laughs> so I decided to use this, for example, for performance. I invite people to dance around it or to do poetry. So it brought me to develop the concept for any social, you know, uh, context, theater, playground, public art, interaction. So making the public the doer I'm instead of just being the viewer. I hear you. Now, uh, yes, let's just do a few movements where our bodies are, s oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to see all the jewelry on my hand here. <laughs> I'm still surprised so to see the beard. So movements. Yeah. So I would imagine if dancers were to dance by this, and they do the same. I invite a dancer. Oh, yeah. nice. But I invite anyone. It could be a musician, and also we draw. Okay. So the fact that you draw on the surface, you see. Yes. My hand is in, in your drawing here, so I can draw with you or not. But it, it brings two expression in unity. So if I, I can try to repeat what you're doing, but I do it in the. <laughs> wow. And suddenly it doesn't matter what you do. Right. What matters is that we are overwhelmed by the transparency. The sense of transparency is very strong, you know. Yeah. When we're transparent, which means we're giving up any... Well, I feel like a ghost. Yeah. I yeah. feel like I'm a ghost that's meeting with another ghost. So it's almost like it doesn't matter. Look, look, look at the, the body here. You see Male, your jewelry? Male, female. Yeah. Look at this. So something to say that I'm invited now to bring this in public space yes. for the public interaction. Yes. But there's so much more I can do with it. Well, you have two people. Who, imagine if you were a parent and your kids didn't get along, and yeah. the timeout would be sitting here looking at your sibling so, until you can match things up. Don't exactly. you think that would end the dispute kind of quickly? Well, I'm interested, for example, Interesting, to... Interesting, huh? So this become a furniture if you think about it. It's not. I don't know if it's art anymore. It involves images. So, it's so people many. working in an office. Let's take a big office like Google, for example. You know? Yeah. You have a lot of people working together, and sometimes they don't stand each other. They don't like to be interacting with each other. If they start playing with this during the workout, yeah. they might say, "Well, actually, this guy I like him. You know, it's, it's fun." So you overcome your differences yes. and your distance. I think so too. Yeah. I think Steve Jobs would have made sure there was one on every. So floor. let's call Steve. <laughs> 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 Put your hands. Yes. So you see. Keep it simple. You see the light. If we have dark clothes, it disappears, but the legs appear. So bring your legs, for example. That's it. No. You see. Yes. Yeah. You see how it changed. Yeah. You see how the so I'm, this is like a theater. I play with the light. I play with the the light, the the, the darkness. The, you know, everything become a theater, a stage here. Yes. I, I and you never control everything. I forget what I want to tell oh. you. Okay, now I remember. Okay. okay. So yeah, there's something I want to tell you is that how do you define this kind of images? Because it's it take away everything I knew about images. Images were permanent that I create as the artist. Here, I don't create the image. And it's not permanent. And it's I'm not in control. Just like Snapchat. It's it happened done in a moment and, and disappear. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
I realize I can use this in any social context. I mean, as uh, again, you know, like a theater architecture, I can do a building like that, a furniture, a performance. So it's what How we call new, it's piece? what we call a new genre. Okay. So basically, it's trend because everywhere I use it, I am not really doing theater. I'm not really doing public art. I'm not really doing furniture, but I'm doing a little bit of everything. It's like I'm mixing all this social notion of separation, you know, what is art, whether it's architecture, whether it's performance, theater, what this becomes everything. Well, here's another thing, what yeah, is diversity? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm looking at you, I, I, I'm a big common ground person, I, oh, don't move. Oh my God! <laughs> See, if I move out of you, like Don't that. move! Okay, seriously, I, uh, oh my God! <laughs> okay, so don't move, this is incredible! You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to grow a beard. It's the weirdest thing. I was like, I want a beard. It seemed like when I was like five, <laughs> I now have a beard. It's amazing. Because see, I think there's so much focus on diversity. It's almost like the yeah. club of diversity. Which diversity are you to celebrate? I like celebrating the common denominator. Yeah. This kind of melts diversity into the common denominator. I'm neither male nor female. No, I'm showing you male, female, yeah. Because I had mine, and I'll show you what, Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I disturbed No, you. see, you're getting distracted, because it doesn't matter. See, now we're thinking about what brings us together. Yeah. I like that. So there's something funny. In any images we see, usually on the wall, it asks us to reflect. Yes. So the image is here to make us reflect on our life. So basically to bring us to our imagination. Yeah. Our thoughts. This one is a pure reflection. And it doesn't ask you to reflect, it asks you to be real. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a paradox that this image doesn't ask you to be reflective, but to be totally authentic and playful. Yeah. Just so the no. opposite. One more time. I just have to see this one more time. And oh. then look at it. You're projecting your image. When you look at images, you're also projecting your imagination. So I'm, you're projecting I'm your projecting, body. but I'm also forcing myself to be where you are, to see... Yeah. To, to move, to understand your body movement and to think about what you're doing. Uh, it's, the focus is really off of me and on you. Isn't that a nice concept? And you, you realize, we realize that we exist through other people. Right. Along, we, we, were, we are reflected through yeah, others. Yeah. We see who we are and by we how they one. see us. We become one. Oh, we are one. This is unifying. Okay, this is too much. <laughs> this too much. <laughs> that's good. Uh, that could be used for anything. One thing that I should say that I love to bring this, you know, to the public social context, you know, but I'm always asked to do the same thing. I can do so much more with it. Gotcha. Like I use it in French for education in the classroom with three years old young children, and it changed the perception of, you know, uh, reality so that it would be inclined to be real and to be an expression when actually we most of the time afraid to be an expression. Right. So it, it overcome the fear, you know, to be real, you know. Yeah. So I use this in education. And it has a, it's a powerful tool. And I'm not able to do this here yet because people don't realize the potential it has. It's normal, you know, they don't have the vision. Well, we're going to get that word out. Okay, that's Let's good. have a seat over here. Okay. And, um, is there a mirror here? Oh, uh, no, there's a mirror here. I'm is confused. there a mirror? No, I think there's a light. Let's see. <laughs> anyway, I have to say, I've been fascinated by your work. Um, I met Philippe because. Uh, I, I had a photo shoot that was in Providence in a building that was being demolished and there was an installation of trees in the what used to be glass and I, I was fascinated because I'm a big time tree person you have no idea love trees love painting trees drawing trees it's always been in me right so I'm resonant it's resonating with me so I'm standing in front of these giant panels of trees and the photo photographer the photographer took the picture and it was up on Facebook and somebody on Facebook said, hey, I know that artist. And therefore, yeah, so I met you. Said, Philippe, you should look at this photo. Somebody took yes. a photo with your tree. Yes. So I tricked you saying, you know, oh, I like the tree behind you. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't want to say it was mine. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, hi, yeah. And then I realized it was you. Yeah. And so now we've met. I've been here in your studio. It's fabulous. I love the way your brain works. Wait a minute. You're sitting on my tree. Oh, you wait a know? minute. And now, see, this tree belongs to everybody. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I, I, I give you permission. I know, thank you. I know you have. Don't time on that because it's dangerous. <laughs> oh, well, I know that you have an obsession with trees, and we're going to get to how you got to that. 
But you didn't start off as an artist drawing no, trees. No, I, I was a printmaker. It involved like actually very technical uh, images that you work on copper plate and takes months to do and blah, blah, blah. But I had a publisher in New York, so I was doing, you know, well as an artist, you know, making a living. But I realized quickly, you know, the discussion with the, the publisher was always challenging about, you know, what will sell, what will not sell. And I went quickly saying, you know, I'm not really an artist, actually, when I do this, I produce commodity for the social context, for the, for the market. It's a market. Mm -hmm. Art is a market. Yeah. So, intuitively, I said, there must be something better. So one day I had an experience that brought me to get out of the, the, this market, to get out, you know, the printing, you know, process and to involve in my images. So I went through a lot of experience in the 90s. And to end up, decided to do only three. But it was a process of experimenting. Mm -hmm. Even I was uh, doing color, I was doing white painting, I, uh, doing you know, digital stuff, computer stuff. But now I decided to focus on two medium, the trees, which means basically two manufactured medium, the plywood, mm -hmm. shingles, plywood, and any transformation of the tree become flat. Right. And the glass. And the glass. So I'm trying to focus on this now. Okay. So, but now what drew you to the trees? I know you were working with aluminum and doing sculpture. So it was actually um, a thought, an intellectual thought, thinking any expression needs a support. So right now, to be in communication, we need to create symbols. Okay. Words. Right. And I need to speak in English. If I speak in French, you will, will not understand each other. Are you français? Oui, oui, bien sûr. <laughs> so I'm using a support here, which is my vocal call. Right. The painter used the canvas, the writer, the paper, the filmmaker, you know, the film. Well, it's not anymore film anymore. Yeah. But so any, any expression needs a support. And I'm thinking, oh, it's kind of strange. The painter used the canvas, and if we need it, it must be essential. But at the same time, I realized we neutralize it because we cover the canvas. Uh -huh. So I thought, oh, there's a, a paradox here. I said, okay, I'm going to play with this. What happens if I reverse the game, if I try to neutralize myself and make the support, the canvas, the subject? So I started experimenting and I did this kind of images. So I give up color, I give a composition to simplify my language, try to be as neutral. I realize actually it's more complex than that because what support an image is also the wall, it's also the gallery. It's also the eyes of the public. It actually, the most important support in image is the eyes of the viewer. Right, the person that's viewing it is bringing yeah. their own thing to the table. Exactly. Duchamp used to say it's the viewer who created the image. So here oh. I, I shifted my game and started doing this kind of work, which is very simple. Uh, if I want to use wood, I want you to see the wood, first of all, before my expression. Okay. Of course, I cannot really completely neutralize myself. But it was a game of relationship. Okay. So one day I took, you know, and I was playing with aluminum piece because I was coming, you know, from the etching. Right. And doing, you see, very simple action, almost mm -hmm. nothing, yeah. using only white, so not to be too much in expression, and the transparency of the white, so playing with this element. And one day I had a piece of wood covered with dirt, if you want, yes. I'll never show you That's the first one. Seat. So I found this wood in the street from a. Uh, from a construction covered with dirt, I brought it from a construction home. site. And I, you know, I was yeah. using free material. It was fun, you know. Right. And I could do something very quickly. So I took a sponge to clean the dirt, and by doing this, actually, clean, when you clean, you actually create an image. Oh, and wow. I saw the trunk of a tree coming. So I, my mind was the plywood has to be the subject, and it's like the plywood was telling me, "What are you doing here? Don't you see? I'm just a tree. I mean, somebody cut me." transform me to a flat surface, you know, for um, construction purpose, but actually I'm still a tree in essence. Wow. So to that point I say, well, I'm going to paint now only trees. Ah. So I was not interested to, I'm not really interested in trees, I'm interested in the symbolic of the trees. The fact that the medium is a subject. So I'm giving up my expression to be in relation with the plywood, and I'm constantly trying to reveal the wood instead of covering it and being myself in on the wood, I want to be the wood. That I want to be amazing. with the wood. Well, and this is why you have this obsession wherever you go. Yeah. I've seen you are on fen old fences. Yes. You created a whole tree. I saw, um, the, I have a photo of you 
with the house that you completely transform the yes. entire house. A back shed in the Stonehill College. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. So it's just, now it's so fluid in you. You don't have to think about it because you're not bringing yourself to it. You're looking at the wood and bringing what the wood has naturally out. Yeah, yeah. You're helping it re-express itself. Can you show us how you do that? Sure, of course. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah, I can do a demonstration on the shingles. Okay. So I always say that I work only from manufactured wood. It has to be flat. So I will never touch a tree. Like a sculptor think you have to have the tree and to sculpt it. Yes. I actually use from already the transformation, basically from the destruction of the wood. So the destruction brings me to be creative and to bring back symbolically, of course. It's a symbolic act. Right. So for example, here's a shingle that you buy at Home Depot. It has, you know, little knots. So my idea here is not to paint on the shingle, but to bring back the tree. And I use very simple technique. Very expensive. Very right? expensive. Uh, instant coffee. Mm. That's the only color I use actually. Plus a little bit of black because the coffee doesn't get really dark and I need to create the illusion of light. Just acrylic? Yeah, acrylic, yeah, acrylic, mm -hmm. yeah, that's all. So that's what is funny, I can carry this material anywhere and paint anywhere, you know, with my material. That's incredible. So, of course, the water is also essential. So I'm going to start drawing something very simple, a branch. And I don't think too much, I'm not trying to decide the composition, I go along. Uh, I see a curve here, yeah. so I could basically go along that curve. Knowing that my intention, symbolically, is to make the viewer see the tree. Not anymore the manufactured material, basically the description, but the life. And the wood for me is still alive, it's still in existence. And we lose this sense. We could say, oh, this piece is ugly, broken, we throw it away. No, we should consider any piece of wood is nature and has to be considered and respected. So look what happened. We all know that, you know, if you put water, you see how we are affecting or we're bringing back the texture, bring back, you know, the, the beauty of the, the wood. I mean, this tells time. I mean, this tells how many years. Exactly. You know? yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm not, you know, I'm not a specialist of wood, you know, but just artistically, I want to be in relation with it. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I'm going to trick the eyes. I'm still an image maker, which is to create an illusion of something three-dimensional on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. So here, my intention is to create the light, the change of light, to create the illusion that the the flat surface is actually a cylinder that the branch of the, the tree. So I put water, so it's a water color technique, and now I'm putting coffee, which is a value, when here, when the water will go back, it will go back to its natural stage. Mm -hmm. And you know when you do water color, you won't have a lot of water so that the, the, the color degrades you know, to the other, other value. The thing is, after printmaking, I decided, you know, I, want, I don't want to be technical anymore. I want to be symbolic. The symbolic is more important than the technique. I'm not here to show that I can draw. I'm here to show that I am in relation with something, and basically with nature. The tree is only a symbol here. It's not, I'm not necessarily interested in trees. I'm interested in how human nature and the way we relate to life, we relate to nature, and actually we mainly destroy it yeah. to create our own nature. So you see I'm starting to create a light, but mm -hmm. it's not very strong. That's why I, decide, I use also the black, so I'm going to take a smaller brush. And at any time I can put back some water. So you can sense how before you paint always to paint your inner thought. Here I paint to reveal something which is already in existence, or who was in existence, who was trying to be back in existence. And that's, I think, more the magic for me now. Yes. I'm here for the tree. But by doing this, I actually uh, help myself to be more authentic, to be more in harmony with the, the struggle of life. So why don't I ask you this question while sure. you're in the midst of this? Because it's almost to me like a meditative process for you. It is. Yeah. I'm seeing that you're like you're in there and you're 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 a part of that. I can see that fluidity flowing. Yeah. If you had one message that you wanted to leave the world or give the world, well, I'm always. What is it? 
You know, I'm, I'm always challenging, questioning the purpose of an image, you know. Why do I choose to make images in my life? You know, I could do something else. So we make choice and we try to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And it's a life experience actually. So I'm constantly evolving in why I'm doing this and does it make sense? Am I really in harmony? Am I really true, authentic to myself? And we, I, we don't want to be in delusion with the life, not to create illusion. At the same time, that's a paradox. I'm going to spend my time creating illusion. An image is an illusion. It doesn't exist. Uh, it's, but at the same time, Picasso said better than me, he said, you know, an image is a lie, but it's created the truth. So basically, I realized that the purpose of an image is to overcome your challenge, your disappointment about life. Like, for example, the disappointment I had with the, the art market brought me to go to that duration to create an answer to the difficulty of life. And I always take example, you know, the first drawing of the cave were done in the same purpose, I think. Why did they went out of life in the cave, in the dark, to create drawing on the wall? I guess they did this to overcome the difficulty of life. They didn't know if they might die the next day, you know, trying to survive and kill another animal, you know. So why the Egyptian did all this artifact, you know, for afterlife, you know? Why an African tribe do a ritual for three days involving all the community, all the tribe, to bring the rain. This is what I sense is supposed to be art, to overcome the conscience of death, basically, if you think about it. Mm. So um, we, are, we are conscious, We're, we know the future, and we know it could be trouble, so the image is here actually to resolve this, to bring back symbolically the harmony. And that's, if you think, that's the purpose of a symbol. Here I do this, I'm very much aware that I do a symbol, and the purpose of the symbol is to recreate unity out of uh, separation. And the Greek defined the opposite of symbol as what divide, and what divide is evil. So the image for me is to create a sense of unity. So when, we, when I brought you around the glass, I felt more in unity with you. Mm -hmm. I felt the same way. Because the distance is always a problem. If you don't like an image, you create a distance, and you create a separation, and you don't create life. Mm -hmm. I hardly know you, how I'm going to be able to feel in communication with you through the language, but also the art form. The image mm -hmm. is here also to create. So I think the way we play, we feel more connected. Mm -hmm. And it creates a positive attitude, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we're constantly going to the negative, if you think about it. I'm very negative, a uh, famous you know, Italian philosopher, Gramsci, used to say, I'm pessimist with the mind, but optimist with the will. And I realize I'm always like that. I'm always criticizing the system, the market, the way we create images, the fact that we, we are constantly, you know, uh, disconnecting from each other. Uh, I walk in the street here and I don't, I don't know any of my, my neighbors, you know. I feel this sense of distance. Mm -hmm. And I think the image is here to bring back... Grounding you, almost. Common ground, yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, common ground. So I'm and then you, these, these images that you've created, they mark a time. You can probably, I'm wondering, do, can you reflect back to when you made that? Do you remember what you, not that you need to describe it, sure. but can you remember what that did for you when you created that, when you brought that out? Yeah. So doesn't that ground you back to that moment of resolution? You, you were there, you resolved something, and there it stands as a testimony. Maybe we're, we're back to your traditional images on the wall, so it's a memory of time, you're right. Yeah? right. And for the viewer, it's a way, again, to bring his conscience and imagination into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is very interesting because I paint trees, but I choose to paint trees without the reality. I don't put any leaves, I don't put any color. Again, I'm here just to make you sense that the plywood is still in its own existence. So I, I do a quick composition, it still has a sense of aesthetic, but I realize after, well, those trees look very dead if you think about it. And I don't want to draw the full tree, the life of the tree, because actually it doesn't exist anymore. So this one was funny because it created a paradox of death, of isolation, but at the same time you can see them trying to embrace Grace, each other. Yeah, they, just the, the limbs are pulling Yeah, so they, they know they're, they're going to die, but yeah. they're reaching to each other. Yeah. And the composition was off, so for a long time I let it be. I didn't want to draw more branches. 
And a few years ago, I went to Miami, actually to the art fair, and we went after to Key West. And just like that, I took some dead, you know, some leaves, make them dry. And I was thinking to put maybe a bird, a 3D object on the branch. And I said, well, actually, I can put the leaves. I so love it. So the leaf add to it's the composition, fun. and it adds also to the element of death because it it, right. it, it feel like it's uh, it's falling. But you captured a moment. Yeah. It feels like a moment in time. And you see the the texture of the wood also becoming uh, the water. Yes. So it, it triggered the imagination basically. Yes. But it's all about the wood, if you think. Yeah. So let me finish this. Okay. And and as oh, I it. wish I could talk. I mean, no, you talk can. many times. Um, but. You know, there's so much more. I know that's in you. There's so many more things about what you've accomplished in your life yeah. and some of the people that you've worked with that's truly dynamic. But I think my quest in this interview, in this conversation, was to find the essence of you and to translate that essence to our viewers so that they could see that passion that I felt when I first viewed your work. And, you know, to me, I just want to say when I look at your work too, that it's almost though you say that you're resolving this moment with resolving death. We die, we move on, and there's some sort of expression that needs to take place. But when I see this, that you're bringing back the essence of what the wood really was in the beginning, it's almost like you're saying every dead part of me, even humans and anything that's ever lived on the earth, you know, something beautiful was there, the memories there, it's still like nothing ever really disappears, kind of like sound just keeps going and going and going and light just keeps going. We don't know where this leads. And that's why I feel like it's, your art is a constant conversation maker. And anyone that comes to it is gonna come to it with their own soul and reflect what's going on in them. So great conversation piece. I know that you are working on a cafe here in Pawtucket. Yes. That is, which we will visit at another time that you have installed tons of your Actually, art. I should name the gallery, it's called the Scene Gallery. We're going to change Scene, it to a cafe and a performance. It's owned by uh, Domingo uh, Montero, mm -hmm. uh, who has this wonderful gallery in Pawtucket. And Pawtucket is an issue also. We're also talking about a town who lost its essence, you know, mm -hmm. from yeah. the economic time, you know, in the 19th century. Yes. So it's interesting to in include the art into this element, you know, of, of community. Yes. And to bring a cafe, to bring a performance. So the place he gave me the space to create it. I'm going to put so my exciting. tree. But at the same time, we're going to through the glass. We're going to invite people to come yes. to perform. Oh, Anyone. You know. We will be there. We will okay. definitely be there for opening night for sure. So I, I can't wait to hear what people are going to be saying about how what you're creating helps them reflect something of themselves onto what yeah. they're viewing. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. Philippe, we're running out of time. Okay. This has been fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much, you're and welcome. I look forward to our next conversation. Okay. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. One, one more thing. There's one more thing I want you to see. Wasn't that fabulous though? Can you imagine sitting down in front of that two-way mirror with somebody on the other side trying to sync up? I mean, there's just a world of opportunity of things that you can discover sitting in that little stool. But there's something else I want you to see. There's another project that he has done that's going to the Children's Museum in Providence. And it's, it's fabulous, it's like a magic trick. And I don't know how to describe it, except you put your arm in, it disappears, and it's, it's an illusion. And he expresses to us what that does psychologically to the brain, how you process it, and how they use it in actual magic and everything else. But So if you have the time, it's just another couple of minutes, stay tuned, and after that, see you later, bye. So Philippe, I would like you to show us this incredible creation that you've made and explain it to us, please. Well, this sculpture is actually doesn't exist only by itself. It exists in relation to the space and to our, your eyes. So I'm going to show you. Like, for example, if I go around, look what happened. Ah, where'd you go? <laughs> so you see, you, you, your eyes become confused. So the mirror actually is always staying the same, but it's always transformed by the reality. So here you want to see the square, but actually you cannot see it. So that's why you deny the mirror, you deny the image. The image part of, become part of reality. And that confuses us. And I'm very is, confused. But that's good. That's the purpose. So what's the aim here? With this, this, this is an installation that you could put in somebody's... We use so much images in time that we lost the fact that images are supposed to be magical. 
Uh-huh. All images are illusion, if you think about it. All images are illusion. So, because we are used to see them, we lose this sense of illusion of magic. So here I, s- I decided to bring it back, and I was actually treated myself by it, the same way as you. So I decided to go along and to play with this. So. And I'm not a magician, actually. So, but this is like magic. Yeah. It's very bizarre because you feel like you should be able to put your hand right through there and you can't. Yeah. So I would imagine people sit around and talk and play with this thing for quite a while. Actually, the Children's Museum bought it. Yeah. The children, so, this is going to the Children's Museum. Yes, ah. they have one sample, the same one, yeah. They wonderful, do. wonderful. And th- on the floor, is that supposed to mean anything with the Well, carpet? I use the symmetry, so the carpet, so I will explain to you later on if you want, you know, the, the concept, how I decided you know, to use this approach. Okay. How it came out. Basically. Wonderful. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, can okay. you put? Can somebody put there? Show the arm going through okay. and how we lose it. So three, like this. two, one. Ah. <laughs> Wait a minute. And actually, it it works so much in reality uh, for the viewer. Well, you have to realize that the mirror disappeared totally. Yeah, people put their hand like that, they, we still don't see the mirror, you know. Right. Even if we are used to see our images, you know, hand coming to the mirror, but we don't see it. The mind is stronger than the reality. Wow, I love that. Oh my goodness. Look at Kermit over here. Check him out. Check him out. There's two. So because there's two space, it creates two space, it creates a paradox. On one space, there could be something, on the other one, nothing. I constantly play with the the opposition of the two space, which sounds unified, but actually they are separate. Awesome. Wonderful. Next.